In this video, we will do an exam review of the bacteria that adhere to the intestinal wall and cause diarrhea. We already discussed E. coli in the other video. In this video, we will discuss Vibrio cholera and Campylobacter jejuni. Campylobacter fetus also causes diarrhea and infects the GIT. Campylobacter jejuni is also included in the bacteria that invade the intestinal cells. Initially, it's non-invasive, adhere to the wall and produce toxin and cause it and damages the cell producing crypts and abscesses. But few important exam question before we start the topic. Question number one, which diarrhea producing organism features resemble ulcerative colitis? Number two, which bacteria causes rice watery stool? And number three, what's the morphology of Campylobacter jejuni? Now let's discuss Vibrio cholera. Vibrio cholera adheres to the brush borders of the small intestinal enterocytes via specific surface adhesins and produces two types of toxins. A type toxin activates adenylate cyclase, increases cyclic AMP and decreases sodium reabsorption in the small bowel causing watery diarrhea or rice water stool and B toxin attaches to the surface receptors of the enterocytes. Large dose of Vibrio cholera 10 raised to the power 5 to the 10 raised to the power 8 are required to cause the infection. Disease is spread by drinking contaminated water and eating contaminated sea food. Now Campylobacter jejuni. It's the most common Common bacterial diarrhea in the USA that peaks in summer. Infection is more in young children and young adults and in pregnancy may cause septic abortion and immunodeficient patients, especially patients with hypogamma globulinemia may also suffer Campylobacter jejuni infection. The organism resembles Vibrio cholera. It is S-shaped, seagull wing-shaped, non-spore forming, microaerophilic, non-fermenting gram-negative rod with a flagellum at the pole. So it's a motile microaerophilic organism which is gram-negative and has a flagellum. Now spread of the Campylobacter infection. It is spread by eating contaminated poultry which is the most common one but it may also spread by drinking unpasteurized milk and by direct contact with infected pets and by drinking untreated water. So it's spread by poultry most commonly unpasteurized pasteurized milk, direct contact with the infected pets and by drinking untreated water. Now pathogenesis of Campylobacter jejuni. The infective dose is small. 500 to 1000 organisms may cause infection. What's the site of infection? Jejunum, ileum and colon. The Campylobacter jejuni adheres to the enterocytes and produces enterotoxin and cytotoxin to cause epithelial damage, glandular degeneration and then invade the tissues and forms Crips, abscesses and ulcers resembling ulcerative colitis and a Crohn's disease. So the disease is indistinguishable from these disorders. So the bacteria adhere to the intestinal cells, produce enterotoxin and cytotoxin and damage the cell and produce crypts and abscesses. Now clinical features of the Campylobacter jejuni: Fever, headache and malaise followed by diarrhea and dysentery after 12 to 48 hours. Loose stools followed by grossly bloody diarrhea with abdominal pains and cramping. So fever, headache, loose stools followed by bloody diarrhea and abdominal pain and cramp. Features may resemble appendicitis if it's localized. Pains in the abdomen causes traveler's diarrhea in the developing countries and biopsy features are that of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. So ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease should not be diagnosed unless Campylobacter jejuni infection is ruled out. Now the other organism in this class, Campylobacter fetus, that may also cause fever with rigors and diarrhea. This organism may infect the cardiovascular system and may cause endocarditis and other cardiovascular disorder and may cause septic thrombophlebitis. Campylobacter fetus may cause bacteremia in immunocompromised hosts. Now the diagnosis of Campylobacter jejuni clinical features with fever, diarrhea and bloody stools. Number two, stools. The organism requires a special medium for growth it grows at 42 degrees in a microaerophilic environment. Stool examination and what the stool examination shows, the direct microscopy gram stain shows vibroid morphology like Vibrio cholera and number two, dark field microscopy shows characteristic 
darting motility. So the stool examination shows vibrile morphology and darting motility on dark field microscopy and the confirmation of diagnosis by culture of the organism from blood, stool and other sites. Now complications of the Campylobacter jejuni. Number one, Ritter syndrome, reactive arthritis. When does it develop? After a few weeks in those who have HLA B27 phenotype. Number two, Guillain-Barre syndrome. Campylobacter infection precipitates Guillain-Barre syndrome in 20 to 40 percent of patients. And the third complication is alpha chain disease. And what's alpha chain disease? It's a lymphoma-like immunoproliferative disorder of the small intestinal lymphoid tissues and this alpha chain disease responds to the antibiotics and number four it may also cause cholecystitis pancreatitis meningitis peritonitis and massive gastrointestinal hemorrhage now answers to the questions question number one which diarrhea producing organism features resemble ulcerative colitis as i already explained campylobacter jejuni produced diarrhea dysentery with grips and abscesses that resemble ulcerative colitis Question number two, which bacteria causes rice watery stool? Vibirio cholera activates adenylate cyclase, increases cyclic MP, which decreases sodium reabsorption in the small bowel, producing secretory diarrhea, rice watery stool. Question number three, what's the morphology of Campylobacter jejuni? Campylobacter jejuni resembles Vibrio cholera. It is S-shaped, seagull wing-shaped, non-spore forming, microaerophilic, non-fermenting, motile, gram-negative rod with a single flagellum at the pole.